Hello, I'm Annie Logue with the League of Women Voters. And today in our Zooming with the Alderman series, we are talking to Alderman Roderick Sawyer of the Sixth Ward. Um, he is going to give us some opening remarks and discuss a little bit about his ward. And then we're going to ask him some questions and let's get started. Alderman Sawyer, please tell us a little bit about you and your ward. Oh, thank you and good morning to everyone. Uh, for the record, my name is Roderick Sawyer. I serve as Alderman of the Sixth Ward. Uh, the Sixth Ward is located on the south side of Chicago. Uh, it comprises the neighborhoods of Chatham, Park Manor slash Greater Grand Crossing, Inglewood, Auburn Gresham, and Chesterfield. Uh, it's a predominantly working class neighborhood. Uh, lots of history and lots of heritage on the south side. Uh, as the map shows, we have 48 precincts, roughly 52,000 uh, residents in the ward. Um, I've had the pleasure of serving now in my third term. So I've been going about a little over 10 years now. And uh, my prior life, I was a lawyer. I practiced licensing work in the city of Chicago and general real estate and transactional uh, corporate work. Okay. There um, we go. That's me. What are some of the key issues that are facing the people of your ward? Uh, economic development is always a overriding issue, but it, it kind of goes side by side with safety mm -hmm. and um, education. You know, those things, I, I think all of those things kind of go hand in hand uh, when we talk about priorities for our ward. Uh, we want the business trips to be active because I think once the business trips are active, we have people that are employed, and then we have fewer people that are on the streets uh, loitering or doing things that might be antisocial or even illegal. Uh, so that's kind of the driving force. Obviously, we have to have a educated workforce, so education is key. And all those uh, contribute to the decline in, in criminal activity, so it makes us safer. So I think those in combination are, are the real priorities of the war. Okay. Um, and when you've said this is your third term, yes. Um, so can you talk about your time in city council and why you decided to run for re-election in 2019? Uh, well, uh, my desire to to get involved in politics is a long-standing one. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. I, I got it probably from legitimately from my father, who also served as alderman in the same ward. Uh, I, I watched him as a young child uh, be in a position to help people. And I thought that was a great thing to be able to do, uh, a great thing to say about part of your life that you were able to help people uh, during part of your career. And I, I wanted to use my career in public service to uh, assist those where I live. I was born and raised. Um, the answer to your next question about running in 19, my work wasn't finished. I, I still think there's some things I need to to work on in the ward to get it to a place where uh, when it's time for me to hand it off to someone else, they would have it in a better position than when I got it. So um, I think it's important. And I think that's important too, to have people uh, get involved in public service. You know, it's not a career. It's, uh, it's a part you take in your life that you, you give back uh, to an area that gave you so much. You wanna give back and help. So I, I, I consider this my service. Okay. Do you still practice law? I have not been practicing law since I became alderman. I've actually uh, voluntarily not practiced, uh, uh, not for uh, <laughs> the desire to. I, I enjoy the practice of law, but I really uh, wanted to do this well, and I really want to dive into uh, public service. So I've taken a bit of a hiatus from the practice of law right now. Okay. Okay. Um, what city council committees do you serve on and are you the chair or vice chair of any of them? I serve as chair of the Health and Human Relations Committee, uh, which oversees uh, the City Department of Public Health, uh, Department of Human Relations, uh, the uh, Department of Family and Support Services. So we deal with a variety of issues, especially now during COVID, you know, obviously uh, the committee has all of a sudden become, you know, oh, yeah. at the forefront of a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, considering what we've been going through the last year or so. Uh, I sit on a I sit on a lot of committees. I think I sit on 
almost more than anybody, just about uh, budget, finance, uh, economic development, um, whoa, traffic. <laughs> <laughs> I think I sit on like eight or nine committees uh, total. Okay, that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> um, what changes, if any, would you like to see in the operations of city council? Well, there are always things that I think we can improve upon. Um, one of the things that I've always advocated for is the council, as a lawyer, the council does not have a lawyer of its own, hmm. uh, a legislative corporation council, if you will. Uh, the corporation council serves, they do work with us, but they serve the mayor. And, and on occasions, I think we have interests that may be a little bit different than the mayor's interests, and we need to have someone that we can trust and talk to and be able to confide in uh, on, on a variety of issues. So I've always thought that a legislative corporation council is something that should be part of the makeup of what we do. Um, I can really go on. There's a lot of things that, I, I, that we always want to improve upon. Uh, the administration of subcommittees. Uh, we, we finally entered in our first subcommittee, I think in city council history, maybe uh, a standing subcommittee on reparations that we're working on right now. Actually, our first hearing is today, this afternoon, which we're proud of about that. But uh, there's always things that we can improve upon. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Would you be willing to allow applicable departments to make decisions on some of the items that now require ordinances, um, as long as your office and, and other aldermen affected were consulted. Um, for example, things like parking prohibition, standing and loading zones, residential permit parkings, traffic signs, grants of privilege in the public way, things like that. What's your those thoughts are, on that? Those are things we can definitely streamline and make a lot easier um, uh, to do. Because currently, as you stated correctly, these things require ordinances to be drafted and Sometimes it takes months for us to do something as simple as a loading zone or a standing zone. Uh, yes, so I, I think those are one of the improvements that we should be making to streamline and make that a little bit easier, but not divert the process. You know, we still have to have some input uh, in what goes on because the community wants to make sure that we are aware of what's, what's happening. But I think it can be done quicker and, you know, less painfully, if you will. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've been to city council hearings where you just go through like just page pages after and pages, page after yeah. page of sidewalk dining or something. <laughs> it, it seems a little uh, much, but yes, we uh, mm -hmm. we can probably do a lot to streamline that process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, the League of Women Voters has long supported having an independent commission draw ward boundaries. Uh, rather than the alderman determining them. Would you support the concept of an independent commission? And if so, what are some of the key elements you'd want to see incorporated? And if not, why not? Well, I, I, I'm still, I'm a big proponent of, of us being able to work with our maps. I'm not saying that we should not have uh, some involvement. Actually, we, we look for involvement from the community when we, I was, uh, fortunate enough to go through the remap process uh, last, well, 10 years ago mm -hmm. uh, when I was a freshman alderman. Uh, I, I like to make sure that we keep co uh, communities, the continuity of communities together. And these are things that I think that we as aldermen should have some input in because, you know, me, for example, I'm born and raised in the area and I kind of know what communities kind of jive together. So when it's mm -hmm. remap time, I know that I would like to make sure that the communities that I that I represent kind of stay intact. And I want to make sure that continues. So I don't know how a community commission would also do that uh, without input from the elected representatives. But uh, I'm always open to the conversation uh, to see how uh, we can get community involvement into the uh, remap process. Okay, okay. Um... So the next topic I want to talk about is ranked choice voting. 
Um, and currently when one candidate for mayor or alderman does not receive at least 50% plus one vote in the February election, then the top two vote getters are on the ballot in a runoff. And ranked choice voting would allow people to select their second choice at the first election, preventing the need for a runoff. Um, would you be supportive of ranked choice voting um, in lieu of a runoff? Or do you have any other thoughts about running elections and special elections uh, for city offices? I've read a little bit about ranked choice voting. Uh, I would like to see, I know that there's a couple of places that do it. Mm -hmm. I have yet to see it implemented, so I'm not really fam you know, familiar with the inner workings on how it works. I have read through some material that was uh, mm -hmm. presented to me in the past. But um, again, it sounds like it's a, a really interesting idea that I think we should take a deeper dive into. I'm not saying I support it right off the bat, but okay. I would be interested in looking at it a little further and actually looking at cities that cities or towns that do it and see how it works. Okay. Okay. Um, if the league wanted to support one of your initiatives, what steps would you recommend the league take? Oh, just call <laughs> me. I'm, I'm easy to get along with. I, 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 I talk to everybody. I, I, matter of fact, I, I sponsor a lot of ordinances. I, I kind of pride myself on, you know, getting a lot of stuff out there, okay. uh, if you will. So I, I work with a lot of organizations, uh, whether it be unions, uh, uh, other interest groups that that, that have a desire to push forth ordinances. I've been, and I'm I'm one of those guys. I stick with it to the end. Uh, okay. I, I was the one. I did author a a ordinance years ago, uh, the anti privatization ordinance. I don't know if you remember that. We but, worked with you a little yes, bit on that with yes, somebody from your office. Yes, uh, Brian Sleet. Yes. 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 So we worked on that for about four years. You know, mm -hmm. once I get onto something, I don't let it go. I just, I stay with it to the very end. Uh, right now we're working on police accountability and I've been working on that since 2016. And now it's 21. So we're, and we're getting close, we're right there. Uh, so again, I, I work with individuals all the time on, on, on uh, pushing through ordinances. I, I like to think I have a good working relationship with my council members. And uh, they at least listen to me if I present something uh, forward and they would, you know, give it a fair shot at least. Have you been doing a virtual ward night um, during COVID? Yeah, we just had a, a most recent meeting last Saturday. Uh, we uh, do a quarterly update and now it, we're working with my staff now to do smaller one-offs virtual to do like single subject meetings. Okay. So we'll, that we'll bring in somebody maybe from the Department of Health or from CDOT or or now we're even talking about bringing in business owners, new business owners to, to talk about their uh, businesses they're bringing to the ward. You know, we're going to start doing little maybe 15 minute clips um, that we can present on social media platforms and, all, uh, and on our website as well. Okay, okay. Um, what are some things that you would like to get done or at least started? um during the remainder of your term which goes to 2023 one of the things i, I really want to work on and I'm, i've been working on it and continue to work on is improving our our, our commercial corridors uh, I, I want to make sure that we have thriving commercial corridors um, it's my belief that you should not have to leave your neighborhood to get essential services or to entertain yourself you know, so we should have our own coffee shops, dentist offices, accountants, um, uh, restaurants, uh, spoken word cafes. We should have all the things in our individual neighborhoods where I'm not saying that we shouldn't venture out to other neighborhoods, but mm -hmm. we should have everything confined. And as a matter of fact, we should be a destination place for other people to want to come and uh, come in our neighborhood to dine, to uh, have a good time, to shop, uh, or to get professional services. Is the Nike outlet in your ward? Yes, it is. Okay, that's a good destination that's place. That's a good destination point. That's a, absolutely. Uh, I, I would say anybody who's got, you know, teenagers who 
grow shoes. Yeah. Your feet grow yeah. so fast. <laughs> yeah, we have a, we have a few destination points that we are proud of. Uh, uh, Soul Vegetarian Cafe, mm -hmm. Lim's Barbecue, Brown Sugar Bakery. We have others that we're very, very proud of, and we're getting more, and that's what we're working yep. on. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and I think that is it for, for our official questions. Are there things that you wanted us to ask that I didn't? Well, no, but actually one of our most recent developments, uh, it was in the news recently, uh, we're uh, breaking ground for a new call center uh, that Discover will be uh, operating. And with that come a thousand new jobs into the community. Uh, we're very excited about that. Uh, these are good paying jobs with uh, insurance benefits, uh, college reimbursement and uh, a 401k package. So, I and mean, that's a thousand new jobs for the community. So we're that's very good. proud of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so with that, if you have any closing remarks, we would love to hear them. I'll just say this. It's, I, I continue to, to enjoy serving the, the city of Chicago and in particular the sixth ward. Uh, if anyone wants to contact me, you can reach us at our office 773-635-0006 or Log on to sixward.com. That's the number six, W-A-R-D.com. Uh, you can log in and register with us and get our weekly uh, e-blast. We send out a great deal of information every Thursday today, For as a matter of fact. Every Thursday, we send out a, a information about job opportunities, things happening in the area, vaccination updates, all these <laughs> things that are there every week. Uh, so I want people to take advantage of that but it, it continues to be a pleasure to serve. All right. All right. Um, and with that, I want to thank Alderman Sawyer for your time today and for sharing all of your thoughts and ideas with you. Our goal is to get all 50 aldermen before 2023. Um, and we're making really good progress to, for that. Um, the next premiere of a um, our Zooming of the Alderman will be on Thursday, March 25th at 6 p.m., where we will be talking to Alderman Leslie Hairston. Oh, and seatmate. you can find out more on the League of Women Voters of Chicago website, which is lwvchicago.org. So thank you very much. Thank you.